Everyone's talking about Daddy of Five this week, the YouTube channel where you can vicariously experience the life and times of a casual child abuser. Or at least, those are the allegations circulating. Philip DeFranco brought this channel to a very wide audience. Although to be honest, this channel's audience was already plenty wide before making the internet very angry, boasting over 750,000 subscribers. DeFranco highlighted some of the egregious ways in which this family treats its children, including tricking them into believing they've done something wrong just to see the reaction. The hell is that? I didn't do that! You tell me what you did! I swear to God, I didn't do that! Instances of physical roughness. <laughs> you know you don't hit girls. Yeah, but she's your sister, she don't count. Oh my god! And recording the kids against their wishes. So you all made me go th all through all this <gasps> just for a stupid prank? Yeah. I'm tired of this. Go and take the camera with you. No! I gotta vlog my life. You know that. But I'm not here to jump on the pile and tell you how awful I think these actions are. Though if you do need clarification, I am not a fan. The reason I'm not piling on is because it's not the crime that interests me as much as the response. It's never the crime, it's the cover-up. I do believe we all make mistakes, even egregious mistakes like Daddy of Fives might be. No matter how serious the offense, it always goes a long way to hear the offender respond honestly to take responsibility, to admit to the mistake, and to offer a plan to adjust and to make it right. And while Daddy of Five gives us a brief moment of this approach. We're gonna make things right. If we continue making videos, you will see changes. There will be no more fighting. There will be no more hard pranks on the kids. That outlook doesn't last long. I'm not here to accuse these parents of child abuse. I'll leave that to the investigative professionals but I will take a look at some of the reasoning they offer in their apology video, and three inconsistencies within it that really bother me. The first is Daddy of Five's chief defense. The videos he makes are fake. Videos are fake. They're fake. They're over-exaggerated. Some videos are scripted. Some video, I mean, they're just played out. The, the kids' ideas, we act them out. Aside from the question of how you fake physical roughness, this defense is at least at some level an acceptable one. Oh, I know the videos look bad, but we plan them in advance and the kids are just acting with exaggerated reactions. Okay, fine. But a problem arises when you pair that claim with the premise that you've intentionally presented your videos as real all along to protect the integrity of your channel. I never really came out and said we were fake because I was scared to kill our YouTube channel. That kind of thing kills a YouTube channel. My kids love the YouTube channel. I didn't want to let anyone down. I, I, we just wanted to make videos for you guys. So you've deliberately presented your videos as real, but then you fault DeFranco and other critics for assuming they are real. This DeFranco guy and all that, he made a video about us just steamrolling us. He never contacted me or anything. He never asked me if anything was real. And if someone is a child abuser, you want that person shut down. I get it, but we're not child abusers. The videos are fake and everyone is jumping on this hate wagon. Everyone is jumping on this, this witch hunt. Everyone is following the media and not getting the real story. It doesn't work that way. If you want to present your videos as real, they get criticized as real. And you don't get to be mad at people for operating under the impression you intentionally gave them. The second issue that bothers me is the parents' claims that their children are under undue scrutiny and should be given privacy. My kids are terrified. They can't go outside. I fear I'm so scared for when they go back to school. And leave the kids. And leave the kids alone. Please? Again, it doesn't work that way. You don't get to put your children on mass public display and then chastise the public for not giving your family enough privacy. If your priority is the privacy of your children, there is an easy solution. <clears throat> Welcome to my tutorial for um, people who have run into this situation where, you know, let's say you've created a very robust 
online gallery of your children and um, you've now run into the situation where you want to protect your children's privacy. It's a very common problem uh, and actually good news there is a very quick and easy fix not a lot of people know about uh, but what you're gonna want to do is is take a look at your keyboard here <clears throat> and um, and look for this button this one right here sorry let me that one right there Give that a hit, and um, and you should be done. That should be it. <clears throat> and um, and now take a look. Your children's privacy should be restored. Uh, so let me know. Thanks. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe for more. And based on the current look of the channel, that may have been the solution for which he opted. Good for him. The third issue that bothers me is the blame shifting which the parents cast mostly upon DeFranco. It would have never got this out of hand if it wasn't for that DeFranco guy starting all of this, doing all of this to my family. He's responsible for this. This is DeFranco's fault, like Watergate was Woodward and Bernstein's fault. Like the Lewinsky scandal was Ken Starr's fault. Like Sandusky's antics were Mike McQueary's fault. And I suppose your argument is we should all just pull a Paterno and focus on football instead. But even if we follow that reasoning that this is DeFranco's fault for blowing it all up, the heat only comes to you if the criticism is valid. If he makes false claims about you or exaggerates claims, you can neutralize them with a reasonable explanation and poof, controversy is gone. The biggest YouTube army in the world isn't as powerful as the honest to God truth. If the honest to God truth is on your side, you have nothing to worry about. What's frustrating about this apology is it does actually contain what it should, a brief moment of responsibility. We just want to say sorry. We're sorry if we let anybody down. I'm sorry if we hurt anybody. I'm sorry all this got so out of hand. But it's just a needle of wisdom in a bullshit haystack. If the video was just that 10 seconds, it would have been so much better received. But instead it has 10 minutes of excuses and blame shifting that bury the message that's needed. If there's a lesson I take away from this ordeal, other than don't mistreat your children for views, of course, but you can't mistreat your children if you don't have children, it's the power of an unqualified apology. Eventually, we all have to make one. And when my time comes, I'll try to remember this example. And if I don't, well, here's another clip for the future video that exposes me. Well, hey, future me, hope you didn't fuck up. Thanks, as always, for listening and for supporting this channel always. Appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chatting my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Okay, bye.